What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're working on the Cushman here. Uh, as you can tell, the batteries are configured differently. Last week was spring break for our kids in our uh, school district. And while spring break was going on, we went ahead and took the battery tray out. I reconfigured the batteries at the time and put both of these big battery uh, Gator batteries there uh, facing up for the plug here. So both of them look the same. Now these are advertised as 36 volt batteries. I believe they're like a more along the lines of a 42 volt system. Um, I contact Navita says, hey, would, um, would the Navitas uh, AC controller work on 36 volts? They said, no, it works on one batteries and I drove it around all last week with the body off of it, just like this right here. It was fine, but longevity, it, it might mess up and up. So um, they said it you know, needs at least 48 volts. So fine, that's fine. I don't think this golf cart needs 72 volts or 90 volts because once these batteries are fully charged, I'm getting 45.9, 46 volts fully charged. I don't think this thing needs 90 volts to be able to operate. 48 volts should be just fine. So think about taking these gators out, putting in a couple of the big battery eagles I have laying over there and into this cart because I can do something else with these batteries here in the future. Also, you notice I went ahead and painted the frame of the golf cart. I painted it black, just rattle canned it. Uh, that's fine. We still have a bunch of wires here that we need to figure out and wires on the front of the cart as well. Now, when I got this cart, the headlights didn't work, the switch didn't work, and uh, some things wasn't plugged in, and uh, we're gonna try to get a lot of those knocked out as well. Also, this, uh, front dash piece here it needs to be cleaned washed uh, we need to get it prepped up we might take some of the stickers that's peeling off from the front we might take some of those off as well but we're going to get those going you know on this video here together i'm tired of it just sitting in here just you know i can't you know i've been like back and forth on the batteries and in this episode here we're going to try to get this thing back together i did get it painted as well i'll show you that in here in a little bit but uh, I think it looks pretty good. Need a rivet, some of these panels down. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna change the batteries out and do something different with that. So let's get this right here video started and I'll, I'll pick you back up here in just a little bit. So these batteries are 100 pounds, very heavy. So because I have these batteries in here so tight, I'm having to use the jack. Uh, car jack and also having to use this plastic battery hold down from a president to lift up on the bottom portion of the battery to get it out of the mount improvise fellas improvise a little bit more not a slide forward there we go So what I think is cool about this right here is in this configuration here, the reason it's sticking up here is because of the angle iron on that side of the channel there is firing up. And if I went and took both of these pieces of angle out, reconfigured them, put them in the middle, I can fit four along that side. I can fit four along this side because we still have room right here. So we have eight modules in parallel, run a bunch of amperage, or I can stick the Falcon batteries in here as well, because the Falcon batteries is the same length 
as these right here are, they're just a little bit wider. They're actually two batteries wide. So what I'm thinking about doing is pulling this battery tray out once again, or, you know, we're not using the utility cart for the day. We're using one of the other golf carts where we can pull these modules out and put them in the other golf cart because, hey, we can't drive two golf carts at once. Let's uh, get these back out here. I love them. They're only 30 pounds a piece. Um, we got to get the battery tray out, start cutting it open and um, reconfiguring it. metal uh, laid out here and I got it butted up against each other it's just an inch and a half um, angle and uh, I'm gonna cut you know one at 30 and the other one that's 30 as well and we might just cut it just shy of 30 so it fits in there just fine so and seven eighths. Ten and seven eighths, that looks like a better deal there. This just goes to show the fitment of the batteries, both of them in here. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna tack this in place, actually burn it in. And uh, we need to clean it up, burn it in, and we should be good on these batteries right here. Check that out, y'all. Oh, man, that's crazy. Four eagles on just the right hand side. I can order four more. We can have 240 amp hour capacity on this cart. Or we can order two more Falcons and have four Falcons on this cart. And when I'm riding, I can either put them on one side or the other for weight distribution, and or I can put them all four up front. I like this. All right, guys, we got the new battery tray in place here so we can fit uh, four 48 volt Eagles per side so we can have actually eight Eagles all together or we can change the settings in the Navitas controller and go from 48 to 72 or 72 to 48 so we can run uh, four Falcons on this right here golf cart here for just, you know, over 112 amp hours of capacity on 72 volts or over 240 amp hours of capacity on 48 volts with the Eagle modules. Remember each module of 48 R72 here has its own BMS. And when you put all of these BMSs in parallel, it just ups the amperage. So you can actually use this uh, in more higher amperage applications. So with that being said, we got the battery in there. We got the, the tray built exactly how we want it this time. I'm not building it again. We've are, we got the, we utilize these same mounts here on both sides and the mounts there and there as well. So I think the next thing we need to do about this golf cart here is address this uh, stock looking dash here. It's really dirty and uh, I'm gonna take everything out of it and go give it a good cleaning. I'll be the first one to say, I don't like all of these stickers on here to begin with. I understand it's a safety thing for whatever this cart was used for uh, previously. However, if some of us peeling, I think we're gonna go ahead and peel these off 
to try to peel this one off as well. And uh, we're gonna also try to clean this thing and get some more of this black plastic to come back to life. So I think the first thing we're gonna do is try to pull this. You know, probably need to put some heat on that. So when I got the cart, I noticed it has a 12 volt accessory plug over here, kind of like a cigarette lighter. I guess we're gonna leave that in place since the hole's already cut and it's on this dash. Um, I'm not gonna replace the dash just because of that. I feel like if we can get this rear dash cleaner, then we'll be in the business to go. I'm not sure if this gauge is gonna work on 48 volt or 72 volt lithium. I don't know if it's only for lead or not, but that gauge is going to stay and this right here switch also has the light switch in there as well so we're going to try to probably just pop these two right here out try to clean this we're going to try to clean this whole thing here and see exactly what it looks like so we need to get that installed next so i got some um hot rims wheel and tire cleaner we're going to use this on the plastic here also got two drills we got two drills rigged up. One's got this brush on it here. One's got that brush on it there to try to clean it with. And uh, that's enough explaining. Let's get to it. piece is drying that we just washed we need to replace some rivets uh, so two rivets on this looks like this firewall here to the front we have a couple across the bottom in the back I've drilled two holes on each side because this lower plate looks to have bent at some point and I don't want that rattle that you're gonna get when you stepping on the golf cart like that I don't want that there's a couple at the front right here. So the rivets that I'm using that I always use, these are a tri-fold rivet and uh, it's all black. And I just put them on with the, uh, with a, like a pneumatic rivet gun. So the other ones that was going here was silver. I'm doing black. You're not gonna see them anyway, so. Rivet head just drops out. There you go, the front panel is on, all the rivets are done there. You go back and drill these two holes just a tad larger. Pull them to fit in just like that.
little bit. Dag, never the thing's aggravating. You know what? That's gonna drive me up the wall. You're not gonna see the rivet. There we go, you're not gonna see the rivet, but you're gonna hear the sound if I don't do it, so. That's better. I like that a lot better. So we got one more to do here and I think the rivets on the floorboard and the firewall are done until we put the front fascia on. So let's uh, get our last rivet in. Kind of a weird angle but Sweet. All the lower rivets are in place. It has a little bit of rattle. Probably to do with these bolts and stuff being on here. So I'm happy with that. That's progress. Let's check this dash out and see if it's uh, dry enough. What do you guys think? Uh, it's not 100% clean, but it did get a lot of that dirt out. And I mean, you know, it's got like rough spots here. And I, I'm just not gonna, you know, put a brand new dash on this because it's YouTube. You know, I'm not gonna show out in front of you guys. I'm building this cart for me. It's, that kind of stuff is petty towards me. I could care less about that. Once we put some armor roll on this right here, I think it'll look pretty good. So going back and forth with that uh, seemed to be the trick. And I have both of those Christmas trees in there like that, if you can see those. Sorry guys, it's not gonna focus, but anyways, those are in there as well. Next, I'm gonna replace the other side. All right, got the mat, and it's dirty. But we got some Clorox up in this mother, don't we? Mr. Bubbles, y'all. Okay. I don't even know how to work it. Anyways, I'm gonna hit this thing up here with some Clorox. Cause I think we need something kind of strong. This is the underside. Once we get the underside kind of clean, we'll flip it over and do the top side as well. We're gonna scrub this as well here. Just one second. We can get this thing any cleaner on the bottom.
it tell it shows. But I know absolutely nothing what I'm doing here. I think it goes on first here. I could be mistaken. Okay. I think that this would go on a second maybe. This. But I think we can go on one. Woo! Watch it there, y'all. Watch your boy. All right, got the horn mounted and it's angled down enough where, like I said, if water gets in it, it should drain out just fine. Right, so we have some connections on the dash here. This main harness here plugs into the stock um, gauge or the state of charge meter. Then we have four these two were taped off here. Uh, not sure if they were not previously used. So we're not gonna use those. The yellow and red are gonna be for the 48 volt or the 72 volt input and output. So this is power in, power out right here. And these are the headlights, uh, power in, power out as well. So we're just gonna leave those alone for right now. This wire here, I believe these went to this uh, little buzzer. I'm definitely not going to hook that up, so we're going to leave that alone as well. The rest of these wires, these wires here, these went to the cigarette lighter that was on the dash, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, so we're going to leave that up here. Um, this right here is going to be the passenger side headlight and turn signal wire. Then we're gonna have the driver side headlight and certain signal wire here. We're just gonna leave all of those alone right now. Um, we'll worry about those at a later time, but that's what those are. Now I didn't explain myself on why I put the dash on without installing the uh, power and ground cable to the cigarette lighter. Well, number one is it has the silver rivets and I wanna put black rivets on there. And another thing is I don't know anyone who uses a cigarette lighter for a power source anymore. Everything is going to USB, so we're probably going to be replacing this anyway with a USB style um, port here. So that'll be on an updated video or probably the wiring video. So we got the golf cart painted in. This is the color I went with. This is a Ford F-150 Gem Green, I do believe. It's got a little bit of metallic in it. It's dirty. It's been sitting in the uh, in the shed here for a while, and uh, I haven't, you know, washed it, cleaned it, or anything. But that's the body, and I love this color. Even though the factory color for Easy Go is green on some of those things, I think this right here just pops a little bit, and uh, I love this color. I can't wait to get it onto the golf cart. So that's one of the things we have there, and that's the color. So what are some things from Easy Go or Cushman? to uh you know just make the cart look a little bit better you know i know we're not spending a whole lot of money in it but this is one thing let's open it up and see exactly what this is these parts has only been in here i don't know two or three months now i haven't opened them haven't looked at anything stock uh, panels were so bad i went in and ordered some new panels for the side of it Remember, the ones were rusty, and I could not stand the rust. So we have some new panels to put on there. Got a couple of different boxes. Got some new front uh, side skirts to go with the body here. I think that's gonna make it look a lot better. That's one side. Went ahead and got the other side as well. So both sides there. Went ahead and got some 
new plastics for the rear of the rig and they've sent ones with tail light cutouts in there not sure if i'm gonna use this or not to be honest with you because i don't know I had some other ideas but we got a new cushman logo for the front of the cart you know like i said new plastics new painted body a new cushman logo will look kind of cool not sure if i'm gonna use this or not I've got some other ideas so when we get it out step we'll see so there we go we got some new parts for the golf cart so before we go any further we're gonna close these doors uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn the air conditioner on because that's one feature I didn't have last year and I'm glad I have it this year. So it's on. Let's cue the montage and let's get installing the new body panels. talking about the sat panels on easy goes website they had a pair for 30 40 something like that anyway I bought the ones that came in a pair and um, that might have not been the right ones because these bolts here aren't completely lined up yet I can push it into place and it'll line up it could be due to this right here has weathered I'm not sure but I went with the cheaper route so that's why, you know, I get a little uh, excess gap right here. If you can see that on the camera or not, it's like that on both sides. Um, I feel like this one is lined up. This one is almost lined up. I'm gonna probably have to push it into place before we put the top on it. So that's that as far as the side panels go. In case you're wondering, that's what I did. So. I'll be sure to put part numbers for everything I used in this video in the description below, uh, tools, everything I've used, so you can check it out or, or know what to buy or know what not to buy. So, you know, that's what it is, and that's that's how the cookie crumbles. So, putting in this back panel here or the front panel for the back uh, portion of the cart, and you got it lined up, and well, guess what? 
Yesterday I got ahead of myself with the rivets and we need to drill out all of these rivets and these holes here in order to put the panel down first and then rivet it in place. But that's what happens when your boy gets in a hurry. So talk about the panel here. Uh, I have my cousin uh, paint the back panels and everything the same color, obviously. Um, anyways, with that being said, if you notice, there's only one hole here. It used to be a big uh, square right here for the charger, and I had them shave that hole for me. And I think it just gives the, you know, this panel a much cleaner look. So these are the brackets that fit between the um, back of the frame against the body itself. Actually, the bolt bolts through this right here side here, and there's a rivet that will go between the uh, outside of the rocker panel here through the body into this bracket here, and it bolts there, or the actually you know uh, the rivet expands there. Um, I was supposed to try to paint these and have these already painted. Um, I noticed after I got both of them here, put them side by side, they're exactly alike except for this notch here at the top. One's right, one's left, vice versa. That being said, uh, I no longer have my bench vise and I didn't paint these right here, so I must see what we can do to try to bend this right here back out maybe with a hammer clamp it down on something and get it as straight as we can then i'm gonna need to kind of grind it down and shoot some paint on here before we can start that process majority of it out it's not perfect uh, I think we'll still be able to use this it's a little bit of a bend in there All right, side shot compared to the other one. I think it looks a lot better than what it looked like a little while ago. Um, still has a little bit of a bow there, but you know, for the most part, uh, when we had them side by side earlier, they were that one right there was really uh, a womp sided. So, all right, got those pieces painted, and I wanted to say that these are here. Turned out great, I believe, especially the one that, you know, had to bend back out of place or whatever. So I've just got some uh, paint on them. The only kind of paint I had was like a bed liner in a can, which is okay. So they're painted black and they look good for exactly what they are. These side pieces here, I did not replace those. I need to 
either clean them or clean them and paint them. But you got one there. This is for the other side. And I don't know why, but I feel like maybe I should have replaced this. This goes along the back side here. You know, it's got like the gouges and stuff in it, but I didn't. And since it's mine, I'm just going to run with it. I'm going to try to clean it. And if the cleaning don't look that great, I might just shoot some paint on it or something. So that was kind of hard to see, but I did shoot this right here back piece here with some of that bed liner in the can. So I think this right here turned out pretty decent here. As you can see, it's got like heavy gouges in here. It's kind of discolored a little bit. Scratch marks, rub marks. This isn't going to take up all of these gouges here, but it's going to give it a more uniform look. And that's the only thing I'm, you know, I'm really going for here since I was too cheap to buy these. So. That's all I'm gonna do to that one. But as you can tell a difference before and after there, if you can see that on camera here, you know, not perfect, but better, uh, better than that. So that's the only thing I'm shooting for here, guys. All right, guys, so it's the next morning now. And as you can tell, um, you can still see like the imperfections in the plastic and stuff. But it looks a lot better in my opinion. It looks more uniform. I'm not sure if y'all can see it on the camera. Yeah, it looks a lot better. We also did a piece here. You know, still you can still see the, the heavy gouges and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think it looks a lot better. You know, just for like a little cheap rattle can job there. So let me show you what I did here. We went in and put these side panels right here on. I used some stainless um, hardware up here. This is quarter 20, I think one inch uh, bolts here. We just did a rivet up front. Now on the service manual, it shows a rivet in the rear. It shows a rivet back here on the service manual. However, I put a bolt here and the reason I did that instead of a rivet it's down here on this bracket right here. I think the bolt is going to uh, give it more uh, stability than a rivet ever would. I'll make sure this right here is tight here and it is. All the fasteners on top of the fenders. The fenders are actually bolted into place there against this side panel as well. And I went ahead and did the same for the opposite side as well. All right, the next thing we need to do is put this plastic cover here across the back uh, rear end portion of the cart itself. We put two in the back here. Maybe I got the wrong size. Let's see. Nope, just needed some persuasion. Not sure if you can see them in here or not. There's two in here that uh, go through there as well. Well, only thing this does is goes through the fender and into that piece.
strap pals of carts. Got this back here. I do believe it'll fit as well. Uh, I'm gonna take it off of here and uh, put it on there. Just see exactly you know what it looks like. Just so I can move it around the uh, between the the back shed and the front garage. So, so I thought this seat would just bolt right up to these brackets, but it won't because these brackets get wider down here. So we turn this into a high back bucket. This is only temporarily. I just wanna make myself clear real quick. When I showed the batteries in here earlier, I did not, and I hope I did not mean that you could run 48 volts and 72 volts together. You know, uh, that don't work. I hope no one misunderstood me. I just want to show that we could actually run eight of the 48 volt Eagles, or we can run four of the 72 volt Falcons. And one, of, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this 72 here, move it back on this right here side, on the passenger side, to kind of offset the weight a little bit of the golf cart, myself, the passenger, whatever. So that's the main thing I'm doing here. So when I'm hooking them up, as you can see here, got two different Anderson connectors here at the bottom, both positives together, both negatives are together. This right here is just a parallel cable that we kind of just, you know, made up real quick with some zip ties. Also, when you're putting them in like this right here, be sure that the batteries are off in case the ring terminals at the bottom doesn't accidentally uh, touch for some reason. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and this right here's got the bolts. We don't have a distribution block in this cart yet. We'll continue that when we start wiring the golf cart up. So in order to move around the yard, I'm gonna just put a bolt and nut through this ring terminal that goes into the controller and into the ground, and then we'll tape it up pretty good with electrical tape so nothing arcs out. So I think the cart looks pretty good. I wanna carry it outside, look at it in the daylight. Yeah, let's get this thing out in the daylight and see what it looks like. Man, this thing, it almost looks black in the daylight. Certain shots, other shots when you can see that green just glitter or shimmer or whatever. Man, I like this. Only problem is it's dirty right now, so. This is the cover for the controller. I want to um, put that bed liner type material on there because you can see where I was uh, hitting it with the flap disc and then that paint didn't cover it well at all. Plus it chipped right there again. So we definitely want to do that as well. Now, this one is running a Navitas AC 600 controller, but it's got a stock AC motor on it. And we just left the motor and just upgraded the controller like in some of the newer easy goes. What do you think? I'm in love. I like this a whole lot. Uh, don't care for that too much. Not exactly sure. Maybe there was another piece in there that pulled this out. And when it pulls it out, it actually fits better. We have the little grill that we need to uh, paint and put in place along with the headlights. Looking at seat options right now, not sure if I'm going to use the stock seats or do an aftermarket seat on here, which I'm leaning towards an aftermarket seat. Those brake cables that's underneath there, they work great. The problem is they're extremely dirty. I need to clean those, but really I need to clean this entire cart anyway. Tires are looking kind of kind of dingy, even, even though they look good on here. Um, I need to wire tie a couple wires that's under there. Still a lot to do here. And uh, even wires up under there, I need to you know, wire tie those as well as also. 
But there it is, guys. I appreciate you guys sticking around. If you made it to the end of the video, I appreciate you watching. Um, trying this longer video here to see if... Uh, if you guys enjoy this content or not so if you did enjoy these longer type videos drop a like or tell me in the comments below what you liked about it what you didn't like about it should I add more music you know does it need to be funnier does it need to be uh, more enjoyable does it need to be more uh, you know informationable I don't even know if that's a word or not but anyways what I'm trying to get to is if I don't answer, if I don't ask questions, I don't get the answers I'm looking for. So I want to make these videos as better as, as I can for you guys. So if you do that, I would highly, highly appreciate it. And there it goes. And just like that, that is the video of the Cushman. We just put the body on. Um, Again, appreciate y'all hanging around, sticking out. Again, I appreciate y'all sticking around. And <clears throat> all right, guys, so that is the video of the Cushman. We got the body on. The next video is going to be kind of cool. I got some things planned for it as well. Um, if you've enjoyed this right here, <clears throat> all right, guys, until next time. Well, next video is going to be all right, guys, so next video is going to be. Um, pretty cool. I have some things planned for that and uh, we'll see y'all later. Bye.